My name is Sydney Stevens. I'm a student in Dr. Shepard's honeybee biology class, and today we will be discussing how Apis mellifera, also known as the honeybee, receive an adequate supply of protein in desert environments. So pollen is the main source of protein for honeybees, but it also provides other nutrients such as lipids, vitamins, and minerals. Protein is important on both a small and a large scale in a hive. On a small scale, protein intake directly correlates with the development of the hypopharyngeal gland in worker bees. Now, the hypopharyngeal gland is responsible for the production of royal jelly and bee bread, which are fed to the queen bees and the brood larvae. So, as pollen is the main source of protein for worker bees, Royal jelly and bee bread are the main sources of protein for queen bees and larvae. Now, this is where protein consumption leads to much larger scale effects on the hive, and it's somewhat like a domino effect. So if worker bees don't consume the right amount of essential amino acids, then their hypopharyngeal glands won't develop to their fullest potential. If this happens, then the worker bees can't produce royal jelly or bee bread. So really, the initial intake of protein is the determining factor for how much protein will be provided for the rest of the colony. Now, not all pollens are created equally. Some pollens have a much higher amino acid profile than others. So, while one type of plant may produce a lot of pollen, this doesn't mean that the pollen from that plant has a lot of protein in it. Now, the desert biome has one of the lowest plant diversities out of all other types of environments, simply because of the lack of rainfall. So in the desert, honeybees don't have as many options for high protein pollen sources. Now, that's not to say that there aren't plants in the desert that have protein rich pollen, because there are some. However, the amount of each type of amino acid in the pollen is more important than the amount of crude protein. Essential amino acids are acids that the body doesn't produce on its own, so the only way for the honeybees to obtain essential amino acids is through the intake of pollen. So while most of the desert plants don't have high protein levels in their pollen, they do have the essential amino acids required by honeybees. Now, one exception to this is the cat claw plant, which lacks the essential amino acid methiamine. So methiamine is required by both adult and larval honeybees, and honeybees cannot raise broods on pollen that's methiamine deficient. So worker honeybees try to avoid gathering pollen from plants that lack this essential amino acid. An interesting fact about methiamine is that it is toxic to certain pest insects. So it can be used as a biopesticide to get rid of the pests without harming the honeybees because it's actually beneficial to them. Now back to desert plants. Since the honeybees exhibit polyfloral selection in their foraging habits, they can switch pollen sources. So if they collect pollen from one plant that's low in protein, they can compensate by gathering pollen from other plants that have high protein levels. For instance, prickly pear pollen is very low in protein, so it's rarely collected by honeybees. However, the pollen from the creosote brush, also known as grease brush, has a very high protein content. So, a group, of, a group of worker bees can gather the nectar from prickly pear blooms and use those carbohydrates for energy while they look for sources of pollen with higher protein content, such as creosote. But like I said earlier, not all pollen is created equal. Some pollen may have a high protein content, but lack in variation of essential amino acids. The opposite is true as well. In a study done by the Department of Nutrition and Food Science at the University of Arizona, they tested the protein and amino acid profiles from the pollen of creosote, palo verde, mesquite, and catclaw plants. 
The research team found that the creosote brush, which is relatively high in protein, contained the lowest level of aspartic acid. On the other hand, mesquite brush contained a high level of cytosine compared to the other pollens. But its pollen has a low protein level compared to the other proteins tested. This proves the point that just because a plant is high in protein, that doesn't mean it has adequate levels of each amino acid. In conclusion, polyfloral selection is important in foraging worker bees living in the desert. Like humans, honeybees can't thrive off of one type of food. The worker bees have to switch up the types of pollen they collect so they reach their essential amino acid requirements. Honeybees exhibit more flower diversity in their foraging habits than even the bees native to North American deserts. Therefore, honeybees are able to collect pollen from more types of plants and can meet their amino acid requirements easier than other bees. And these are the sources I use for this project. Thank you.